Um, so our next speaker, uh, Vanessa, would you like to introduce? Yeah, so it's Marco Amando. He's next. He's from a company called Anova, right? Yes. I can't wait. Hi there. Hello, Marco. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Marco. You just appeared like a god. We can't wait for your talk. Yes. Okay. Take it, Let's take it away. Let me screen, share my screen. Okay. So, hello, everyone. I'm Marco Amador. I'm Are you sharing your screen? Lead. I'm trying to. Okay. Okay. Just... There you go. Yeah. Just give me confirmation. No. Yes. Thanks. Okay. So I was saying I'm the chapter lead for data and SRE at Innova. Um, and Innova is the little global provider for IoT to remotely monitor and manage uh, assets. Uh, Innova a, is a three year old company, but it's the result of uh, the merger of five um, well established uh, companies. And with that, uh, we suddenly have five different platforms, five different ways to build and release software. So we need to find uh, a unified way to do that. And we are, or we created the platform that we are using for the old company. It's called Unify. Um, Unify as a pretty dope um, tech stack. We are running everything on Kubernetes, on a Istio service mesh, and we are using a bunch of other tools for observability and so on. So when we were creating this unified platform for all of our um, projects and um, onboarding new, new customers, we had a few concerns when we are, uh, were uh, creating the platform. So about scalability, our platform would need to scale horizontally uh, the cluster or the cluster themselves and the workloads need to auto scale uh, um, accordingly to the load that we were getting. And another concern is that we need different geographies because we have customers from different continents that need their data segregated uh, accordingly and in multi region as well inside the geography we have multiple regions uh, mostly for redundancy and data re uh, replication for instance um, in each of those uh, clusters uh, we have or in each of those uh, regions we have multiple uh, environments as well uh, production staging and sandbox for some experiments uh, and Again, we also need to have uh, security in our minds, uh, building the platform from scratch and uh, to enforce the security policies that we, we wanted to have in place regarding infrastructure as code and uh, workloads and, and that. Uh, our platform would also need to be multi-tenant because we have multiple teams or products that we want them to have completely ownership on their uh, releases. So uh, we have multiple uh, namespaces inside Kubernetes for multiple what we call tenants. A tenant can be a, a product team or uh, whatever. They have uh, their own namespace where they can deploy whatever they want. For that, they will have uh, GitOps, uh, their own GitOps repositories, infrastructure as code repositories. They have complete ownership. And for the operations teams or the platform team, there's as well uh, multiple namespaces that we need to, to manage uh, somehow. And for to manage all of this, we decide to go with GitOps. Uh, that probably you already heard of, or we wouldn't be here. So it's a way to declare uh, our desired states uh, through uh, manifests, YAML manifests, inside uh, some Git repositories. So we decided to uh, we to go with Flux. Uh, firstly, with Flux v1, and uh, uh, about a, a year ago, we start using Flux v2. 
So Flux um, has a multiple uh, controllers, uh, each with its own responsibility. The source controller manages the Git sources or the Elm sources, uh, basically synchronizes the, our uh, Git repositories and the customized controller, which uh, applies customized basically against those sources to render and apply those uh, manifests in our Kubernetes clusters. And the Elm controller, which uh, handles the Elm releases uh, that we might have created in, inside our uh, cluster and deploy the workloads themselves. So for that, uh, as I told you before, we have multiple GitHub repositories. Uh, the one that we call main is for the platform team where we define what uh, environments and what regions do we have and each of that region represents a Kubernetes cluster and um, where we define uh, everything in our tech stack, the issue service mesh, our observability stack, everything is configured here and most importantly the tenants that we have or our product teams and each of the, that tenant again as its own Git, GitOps repository where they can again reflect all of our clusters and environments and, and regions and declare or create their manifests for their uh, services. So with so many regions and with so many environments it would be very easy to create a lot of duplicated code so we are using Elm releases uh, or Elm uh, a templating tool that prevent us to repeat or create um, duplicated code as customize. Customize as the concept of overlays uh, like we can uh, describe uh, in a generic way what our um, workload or our service is and then apply specific overlays with the small difference that each region and each environment has. So we prevent uh, drift and duplicated code as well with customize. So uh, you can see uh, um, some demo repository that we have. It doesn't reflect 100% uh, what we have in production, but it's um, a good start to look at it. I can show you a little bit. So we have our platform repository uh, where we define our environments and regions that we have. And basically all the workloads that we have for operations, which can be uh, the issue service mesh and all the tools that we have in our observability stack, like Grafana, uh, Loki, uh, whatever. And then we have for each tenant their own uh, repository as well. So in this case would be the tenant data where as well they will have all the environment that we might want to have. The base where they can create the all the um, what the Elm release is, and then the small difference for its region and uh, like uh, the tag, the image tag or the image policy will be different in production that would be on staging. Okay, so how do you do a continuous delivery? We use image automation, another pretty cool feature from Flux V2. Uh, which bring two additional controllers, the image reflector, which keeps fetching the image tags from any container registry that we have. And um, based on some CRDs from, uh, sorry, from um, Flux, uh, we have image policy where we define for each environment what kind of policy or uh, what expression do we, we, we want to automatically update uh, a workload? 
And if that image policy uh, matches, any tag that was fetched by image reflector, then image automation controller automatically updates our Git repository. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll have a, a new uh, version rolling out in our clusters. So this talk was about progressive delivery and we are talking about continuous delivery. Why do you want to take or deliver things a little bit slower? Because a lot of things can go wrong when we just roll out a new image. Uh, we can be introducing regressions, we can be introducing errors, uh, the integration text might not be as good as they should, uh, and probably everything is okay, but the latency uh, increased, and then our cellular will not comply. So for uh, progressive delivery, we are using another tool from Flaga, uh, from WeWork, sorry, uh, Flaga, which has, uh, which has um, multiple deployment strategies, Canary, AB testing, and blue and green, and from which we are using mostly Canary deployments. So the Canary deployment principle is very simple. Uh, when we detect that we have a new uh, version of our workload, we spin up a new container by side the one that it's already running and start progressively sending traffic to that container while monitoring the metrics to see if everything is okay or not according to our SLU for that specific service SLU. If everything is okay, we might increase the traffic to that canary until some kind of threshold. If everything is okay, the canary will be promoted to the primary and then we have our new version completely rolled. Here it's a little bit more explicit. We start uh, starting just a few amount of that traffic to the real uh, to the new version uh, and keep monitoring the metrics. If at the end everything is okay, the primary version will be replaced by the new image tag. So. Sometimes during this canary analysis, we might not have real traffic um, coming from outside. So we wouldn't have metrics to know if everything is okay or not. And then the canary wouldn't um, progress. So we can define um, during the canary analysis some traffic for the canary. For instance, we can use a tool called A or even perform load testing with case six, for instance, where we define specific uh, test case for that specific service that we want to test every time we release a new version. While uh, that canary analysis is being performed, uh, we have a lot of dashboards that we can monitor case six metrics themselves and how the canary progressing is, is is doing. We can see the latency, the network and everything or the resource consumption. So uh, another, the, the canaries are uh, ephemeral, uh, meaning that they only last uh, while the canary analysis is being performed. Sometimes we want to, to to release a new completely uh, version, which might uh, be from a completely different architecture, and we just want, don't want to release that soon. So we are using as well dark launches to release uh, a new version only to a specific set of users. Uh, and for that, we are using Istio uh, virtual service uh, feature called delegation, where we can have our uh, workload as before with canaries and so on, but we create by side uh, another um, primary deployment with its own canary and a, a new virtual service and create a, a different virtual service that delegates the traffic 
to the dark launch if the request uh, has a specific header, for instance. So in this case, if we have the users that are performing the requests have this specific uh, header called side dark, the traffic would go or would be forward to these deployments uh, with Canary or not. And again, we could use K6 to generate traffic and create uh, load tests and monitoring with uh, Prometheus, for instance. At the end, uh, we would have this or we would be able to test the new version, not if, if um, for a short period of time, that would happen with the canary, but as long as we want. So I think I could show you a little uh, demo about how this works. So let's say I have a cluster here and uh, let me see, I have a few pods, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, so I have a few pods here, and I have here a canary. Okay, and here I'm going to simulate some uh, requests to this application. Right here, all the requests are coming from a container from a version 1.0.0. So if I push a new container or a new image tag for my container registry, let's say one one zero uh, the image reflector if you remember will ref, um, will fetch the new tag that i'll probably have already here in my docker registry i have now two tags one zero zero it's the one that is running and one one zero that i wanted to release progressively right now with a canary deployment. I can make things fast. Flex will do all of these automatically, but I can just make this a little bit faster if I reconcile myself. So here I'm trying to find or to fetch new tags. He already found two tags and now I'll reconcile the image, update, so if is there any image policy that matches, it will uh, push a new commit to, to my GitHub uh, repository. So here, I guess that the kernel is already progressing, still zero, receiving 0% 0 of traffic. So here we only see 111, but in a few seconds, it will start to forwarding new okay i have here the 110 that has a cow in in the response so right now the canary analysis is being performance and analyzing the the metrics and we'll forward or we'll progress the amount of traffic to the canary uh, as long everything goes well Okay, 20%. Now we're going to see a lot of cows increasing the amount. Okay. And I'm already making some requests here at by side. No, not too, okay, 30%, 40%. Usually it takes longer, but for the demonstration, I create the, the interval pretty slow, pretty small. So when it reaches 50%, the canary will be promoted to primary and all 
or 100% of the requests will be already receiving from the new version. Okay, 50%. Okay, and now the canary is promoting to, to the primer. So all of the requests will be now the new version. So I think I could also demonstrate if I have a few minutes, the dark launches. So I'll just push my new completely uh, new version, let's say to one, I can be to zero, which will not be available in the reg or the normal request. The, and I will need to activate, sorry, the, the dark launches. Okay, not here, not production staging, not here of, okay. I'm going to activate dark launches with a new image policy that will fetch the new tag starting with two. Okay, and Okay, so now I'm going to have to just reconcile the source, just to make things faster. And here I'm going to make the requests for the small set of users that know that there's the other that accesses the dark launches. So it's side dark. Right now it, it's not in place yet, but when I, okay. Here is already starting the new dark launch. And they both of these windows are using the same request, but this is now accessing the dark launch instead of using the normal, which has here a little dark cow. Okay, and as well, I can just trigger canaries for the dark the same as the, the main version. Okay, so this is how we are doing kind of deployments and dark launches. Okay, we still have a few challenges to solve in our cloud native journey, like unified uh, observability, because we have a bunch of uh, environments and, and regions, and we have different uh, observability stack the uh, URLs. And that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco. That was great. I'm just going to check and see if we had any questions. I loved all the images. What a well done presentation. <laughs> <laughs> I think we don't have For any time. questions. <laughs> yeah, for your time. Thank you so much. I think some of the questions will be in the Slack channel. Guys, if you have okay. any questions you need to answer, Marco will be there for like a couple of minutes or will you have sure, some time sure. to answer questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye.